Tell him, McCluskey. Tell him what time it is. Little hand says it's time to rock and roll. All you people are so scared of me. Come quietly or there will be trouble. Man, that's just me. I'm Batman. This is Sparta! There is a tiger in the bathroom. I'm an excellent driver. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Pop quiz, hot shot. Keep the change, you filthy animal. I have been and always shall be your friend. Live long and prosper. Hello and welcome to this week's Monday Movie Show. We're live on a Sunday night. The first time we've done this in about five, six weeks. It is the 1st of March 2015. That's if you're listening to us live. If you listen to us back on the podcast, then you know what date we're recording the show. I'm Stuart. I'm Andrew. Yep, he's finally returned because last week you weren't feeling very well, were you? No, last week I I don't know what it is. I, I had man flu and it gets joked about a lot. Genuinely, seriously, I was completely not well at all. I yeah, was, my, my other half. I was supposed to basically. My my other half was there. Saw me at the weekend. I was supposed to go out and, and do things on the Sunday. Literally, the the words from her were "stay in bed." I was that bad. Yeah, that's probably the same thing that in, inflicted me in January when I had to skip the week because I was really, really ill. So ill that I had to come home from work, which I've never done that before. So yeah, yeah it's, illness. It's horrible. It's horrible. Man flu. Man flu is horrible. Man like flu somebody's is not a seen... joke. People say yeah. it is, but it, people, man flu is not a joke. Yeah, we need one of those adverts now because you've got them for prostate cancer and for breast cancer and all that stuff. We need one for it, man you know, flu. You know, actually, what's surprising me still at the cinemas, they've got the whole thing, and it gets a laugh every time as well. And I'm going to say it anyway, the premature ejaculation ads are back in the cinema. Oh, and I wonder where the first short doors. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and enough on that. We're here to review, uh, review films, not to comment on specific ads that are being shown in front of films at the cinema. Um, <laughs> on this week's show, we're looking at four films in the cinema section. They are. So I was just thinking how much of a good show that would be, you know, talking about the Kevin Bacon EE adverts and things like that. Um, yeah, this yeah. week we're covering uh, the the sequel to Exo- Best Exotic Marigold Gold Hotel, surprisingly called The Second Best Exotic Marigold Hotel. I like that. A little twist a bit. Um, we have Will Smith in Focus. We have Jennifer Lopez back on the screen. Been a while um, in Boy Next Door. And we also have Horror in It Follows. Yep, and on Blu-ray and DVD, we have a little bit of a packed show. We're looking at these films. Yeah, some uh, several big films from the end of last year, including uh, we have Pride, the British sort of uh, comedy drama based on true events. We have uh, the, the drama disturbing psychological sort of thriller in Nightcrawler. We have the historical drama about the artist Mr. Turner. We have a also another drama but with uh, Robert Downey Jr. Um, with The Judge. We have horror again with Wreck 4 Apocalypse. We have um, Nicolas Cage is back with The Dying of the Light and we have horror with Clown. Yes, that'll be an interesting one. Um, on top of that, we have our TV Movies of the Week, the Blu-ray DVD Top 10, the Box Office Top 10, and the Movie News. But also, make sure you check out the website, mondaymovieshow.co.uk. You can get us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash mondaymovieshow, Twitter at mondaymovieshow, email us, mondaymovieshow at yahoo.com. We have to get that out of the way with. We shouldn't actually mention them at the end of the show anyway, anymore, considering the amount that we actually drill it in people's heads where you can get in contact with us. I've yeah, done. Where, I've finished. Where? Yeah. Sorry, I wasn't listening. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to the end of the show and you'll find out then. Then, um, <laughs> But let's kick things off, sadly, with some movie news. Yeah. Uh, very sad piece of news, especially close to myself um, regarding last week on Friday. Uh, it had been announced Leonard Nimoy had passed away at the age of 83. Um, if anyone isn't aware of Leonard Nimoy and who there is, they should be surprised. They should be ashamed, really. As much, even if they don't watch it, he was severely well known extremely well known for playing the character of spock in the original star trek series from 1966 to 1969 and then occasionally in some films thereafter um he also had a career directing several films including you may be surprised to learn he directed things like three men and a baby um and it was uh, announced that he passed away on last friday um 
of uh, um, an issue that he'd had from last year he announced he was suffering from a uh, lung disease ob obstructive pulmonary disease um, which is a, a chronic lung condition um, which is what has been led to believe that that's the reason why he passed away um, so it's a it's a real shame personally for me because I, I'm a big Star Trek fan I grew up watching it um, the character of Spock is very well known to me and very very sad day yeah same here I think a lot of people in the UK, considering when when we were children, um, we only had three TV channels, and so the, the kind of programs that we had to watch was very limited, and you were sort of like subjected to what your parents wanted to watch as well. But it was such a good job that in my household, um, we used to watch Star Trek on BBC Two at six o'clock, yeah. and so it used to be on the reruns of the original Star Trek, and then the next generation when that. So I grew up on the original Star Trek, big, huge, massive fan of Star Trek. I had the encyclopedias and all that kind of stuff. So very sad in the Star Trek. And then the whole, it, whole generation grew up on it, really. It's, a, a, yeah, it's, it's been a staple of, in particular, our generation. It, it is. It, it's sort of like it was what Gene Roddenberry did with it. It was very unique at its time when Star Trek originally came out because it was all about equality. Yeah. And it was uh, it was all happening during the time when we we've seen all of these films where it's all about race riots and things like that. And one person in the form of Gene Roddenberry decided to create a series where he where there was one character every single week who went down with the party who had a very generic name who got killed off. But that was sort of like a little in joke that ran throughout the series of Star Trek. However, if you look at all the races and creeds and colours and different genders, things like that. Everybody would treat the same in Star Trek, and it, Leonard Nimoy's character of, of Spock was was at the forefront of that. It was just the meeting of a human mm -hmm. met with a Vulcan with two. I, we should say I, you're probably going to sound like I'm cutting in on you, but the the sound is cutting out here every now and again because we um, we should say to anyone listening that Stuart is having internet problems this evening, so his connection may drop off as it appears it's happened. And it seems it has. And we're going to try and see if we can get him back. One second. No, it looks like we may not be able to get him back at the moment. Which is great news. Okay, so we'll try this again. No, okay. Right, the problem is as well, we are having a, a problem with the connection and also we are having an issue that Stuart has seen three of this week's cinema releases. If I am unable to reach him, I am going to get back to him as possible as I can, but if not, I will continue, try to continue the show, but I will only be able to go through one of the cinema releases. Um, so without that, though, before that, I think what I will have to do is see about going on to the UK box office top ten. Um, oh, let's see. Are you there? You're back. Yeah, um, I, um, yeah. This is brilliant. Doing a live show. My internet <laughs> decides to cut out on me. I I warned Andrew yeah. before the start of this week's show that my internet is not uh, playing very well today. I I have just been saying that in your absence because in the middle of you cutting out, I was trying to explain that to people, and I was about to say I'm going to try and continue with the show and go into the box office top ten. But as you're back. <laughs> Fingers crossed it stays that way. <laughs> so I will give people a major forewarning. My internet has been acting up or so. I don't know why it's decided to choose that now, considering it was working perfectly fine all throughout today. Um, so I might drop out. If I do, it's due to panic a little. <laughs> Especially if it's during a review. Then I go, well, where are you going to go from there, considering that you have only seen one of the four films that we are reviewing? So we better... Yeah, you're still. You're, it's cutting out again. Um, <laughs> I'm actually not sure whether to continue or not, or if we should possibly try and do the show on another night now. <laughs> um, right. I'm trying to see. No message. Okay. Right. Well, I'm going to go into the box of his top ten, um, which because um, Stuart did have some pieces of news, but. If we're not able to speak with him, we may have to then leave that. Um, I'm going to go into the top 10, though, starting at number 10 with American Sniper, 
which is uh, Clint Eastwood's um, Oscar nominated movie um, if you haven't seen anything about it because it, it's been causing a bit of a stir you have a lot of people who have liked it a lot of people who have disliked it it has very very mixed reactions um, I believe Stuart and I are both on the, of the reaction that we, we thought parts of it were good parts of it were not so good the sniper sequences where it's set in Afghanistan are rather good the um, parts where it's set in America with the character back at home are not so good because of the fact that it has a problem with sort of nothing much happening and, and sort of very plain and, and it doesn't really play up those parts um, at number nine is Jupiter Ascending which is the the latest from the Wachowskis it is the the movie that has um, the, the surprisingly award-winning Eddie Redmayne in it though not playing anything that's really award worthy because he's playing a very very weird very typical villain um, that's very very quiet and um, doesn't um, seem to be sort of really in there at all for any any sort of a, anything memorable that you go kind of go yeah this is a this is an award winning actor um, we have uh, the the whole thing is a big science fiction action thing the acting in it isn't brilliant the story is just about the same and um, it's worth seeing for the big screen and enjoyable but aside from that not much more talking of Eddie Redmayne playing the Oscar winning role that won him best actor at number eight in the theory of everything which is the uh, the story uh, about the um, world known world renowned physicist Stephen Hawking um, who if you're not aware is the one who is in the chair and speaks like a computer voice because of the fact of that he cannot speak he's not able to um, and if you've not seen the film it's worth seeing it's great drama um, I'm still sorry. Apologies. We are having issues with Skype. It's popping up now on my screen and giving me lots of things in my way. So I cannot see the top 10. 